Hello students. My name is Michael Smith and I will be your instructor for American government this semester. I apologize for not being able to be with you on today. I live in Houston and the freeway surrounding my house, I live off 288 and pretty much everything, all the freeways, the intersections there are underwater. I hope that this recording finds y'all dry and y'all safe. And we will meet in person on the Tuesday after Labor Day, whatever next Tuesday is, I believe the September 5th. But I, we couldn't afford to miss a week, so I am providing a syllabus video, and then I'm going to do a lecture over the first half of the chapter we would be covering so that when we come in next week, we will not be that far off schedule. I'll be able to catch up, easily catch up to where we were, and we can proceed with the semester as normal, even though we've gotten off to a rocky and wet start. Syllabus video. If you go to your content, you'll see your syllabus. Uh, you'll have your syllabus video that I'll put in in a minute, then exam one materials. This is where you're going to see your PowerPoints, your review sheets, all that good stuff. So your syllabus, course syllabus. Let's see what we're going to have to do this semester. This is American government, government 2305. Section 600, CRN is 11530. Meeting times. This is a lecture class. We will meet Tuesday, Thursday, 725 to 840 in room 112 in the main building. My name is Michael B. Smith. My email is michael.smith at blend.edu. For those of you who have been here for a while and for those of you who haven't, this is very important information. When you try to contact anybody in the blend system by email, if you're using the D2L, the eCampus email, if you email from eCampus to an eCampus email, you can respond. If you email from your eCampus email to the outside or to the general blend edu email, the blend edu email cannot respond. So if you email me to michael.smith at blend.edu from your eCampus email, I will not be able to respond to you. I'm not trying to ignore you. This is a flaw in the system. So please, whenever you are emailing me, be sure to email me from your blend.edu email, your general email. My office hours, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 to 7.20. Before class, I teach back-to-back -back classes, so I have a class after yours. This doesn't work, let me know, and we'll, work, we'll make other arrangements. Description, 20, course, Government 2305. It's a study of the organization, functions, and administration of the several branches and agencies the national government, including a study of the federal constitution. The primary factors considered relate to the three branches of government, judicial, executive, legislative, major historical documents, the events that shape the nation, and current events. Emphasis will be placed on the interaction of these subsystems. This class is 48 contact hours. You get three, you get credit for three semester hours. I am a big believer in discussing current events so that you understand there's something going on, there's something bigger than you, me, than all of us. And I don't, these current events don't necessarily have to be political. I will start every day by asking you what has happened since the last time we met. I expect answers. If you don't give me answers, I will happily call on you. It's not a problem for me. We will discuss what is going on, how y'all feel about it, all that good stuff.
outcomes at the end of the semester. This is what we hope you will be able to do. Explain the origin and development of constitutional democracy in the United States. Demonstrate knowledge of the federal system. Describe separation of powers and checks and balances in both theory and practice. Demonstrate knowledge of the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of the federal government. Evaluate the role of public opinion, interest groups, and political parties in the political system. Analyze the election process. Describe the rights and responsibilities of citizens. Analyze issues and policies in U.S. politics. Materials. You will need We the People, the 11th full edition. There's a special custom edition for Blinn College. You can pick this up at the bookstore. Evaluation. What is needed? What will happen? How will you earn your grade this semester? This semester, you will take three exams, one cumulative final exam, and you will have one special writing project. Each student will be responsible for providing a Scantron. This is the Form 882 or the 882-E. This is a small Scantron with 50 answers on each side. This is the Scantron you used in high school for your standardized test or for your, your high school test. Same type, of high school, or same type of Scantron. Pick it up from the Blend Bookstore. You will need number two pencils and erasers for each exam. This course will consist of three 50-question exams. Each exam will consist of multiple choice, fill in the blank, and true-false types of questions. Each exam will count 50 points towards your final grade. There is a 100-question cumulative final. The final exam will count towards a maximum of 100 points towards your final grade. The special project will count as a maximum of 30 points towards your final grade. The due dates will be posted on eCampus. Also, there are 20 participation points which can be earned. These points are based on attendance. For every unexcused absence, you will lose five participation points. A total of four unexcused absences may cause you to be dropped from the course. I'll go over that in a minute. Breakdown. I do not use a percent system. I use a point system. Three 50-question exams worth 150 points. One 100-question final. There's 100 points. There's one special project, 30 points. Participation points, 20 points. There are a total of 300 points available for you to earn this semester in this course. The breakdown for final grades is as, follow, is as follows. 270 to 300 points is an A. 240 to 269 points is a B. 210 to 239 points is a C. 180 to 209 points is a D. Anything less than 180 points is an F. Blend College Policies. Civility Statement. I told you a minute ago I'm a big believer in discussing current events. During the course of the semester, you will hear an opinion you do not agree with. That is okay. It will not hurt you. Feel free to disagree with any of your classmates. Feel free to disagree with me. However, do it politely. Do it civilly. Just say something along the lines of, well, I disagree because of this reason. No name calling, nothing like that. Part of this course, part of going to college is to expand your horizons and to perform to learn to perform critical thinking. You will hear things you do not agree with, but analyze what's being said. Attendance policy. Blinn requires you to attend class. According to Blinn, there are only four reasons you may have for an excused absence. These are the only four reasons I will accept. Observance of religious holy days. Students should notify their instructors no later than the 15th day of the semester concerning the specific dates for absences of, for any religious holy days. Representing the college district at an official institutional function. Dual credit students representing the high school or independent school district at an official institutional function or military service. If you're a military service, reserves, whatever, you need time off, that is fine. I will just need to see orders. 
It is your responsibility to officially drop a class you are no longer attending. Scholastic integrity, basically don't cheat. Very simple. On the exams, on the writing assignment, don't cheat. No copying, nothing like that. If, you, if you're going to copy on your writing exam, cite, give, give credit where credit is due. Students with disability, Blend does not discriminate against students with disabilities. If you are a student with a disability and you need accommodations for your testing, please go to the disability services, fill out the proper paperwork. They will give you paperwork. They will give you a letter of accommodations to provide to me. Please do this as early in the semester as you can so that we can make sure all of your accommodations that are needed and are being met. Final grade appeal, if you wish to appeal your final course grade, there's a three-step process. It is found here. Here's the link. It's in the Blend catalog. Alternative retailers, this is about textbooks. You're not obligated to buy the textbook from Blend Bookstore. If you can find it from a third-party real uh, bookstore and want to buy it from them, go for it. Campus carry, here's Blend's college policy on regarding campus carry. Here's a link to it. Now, course policies. These are my personal policies. Attendance. Blinn requires attendance to be taken on a daily basis. To meet this requirement, I will call roll at the beginning of each day. If you are not in class when the roll is called, you are considered absent for the day. You must stay for the whole class. If you leave early without getting permission from me, you will be counted absent for the day. And I'll go over that in a minute. Once again, the only excused absences are those recognized by Blinn's. By blend. I do not accept notes from the doctor or anything of this sort. You are an adult. You, if you have to prioritize what you need to do if you want to come to class versus if you want to do something else. If you miss a day, you should get the lecture notes from a classmate. Do not email me asking me for the lecture notes. You will not get them. Remember, this is a Tuesday, Thursday class. After four unexcused absences, you can be dropped from the course. Electronics. There are no laptops, iPhones, iPads, or anything like that in the classroom. All notes must be handwritten. I do this for a couple of reasons. First reason is that research shows that students who handwrite notes actually remember more. Second reason is if you're sitting in the back of the classroom with your computer up, are you taking notes? Are you looking at slides? Are you watching something on Netflix or YouTube? I don't know. I do not have the ability to sit over everybody's shoulder in this class and make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to. Plus, you're an adult. I shouldn't have to. But before anybody ruins it for every one person ruins it for everybody, I'm just going to nip it in the bud. No electronics. Handwritten notes. If you want to tape my lectures, you have a tape recorder if you want to use your phone, that's fine. Sit in the front row or else leave your phone up on the podium where I'm lecturing. At the, if there's a table up there, you can leave it up there and leave your recording device up there. I have no problems with you recording my lecture. Reviewing test. I will not return the test. I will only return the Scantron. If you wish to review your old exams, you may do so during office hours. Now, I'm kind of odd in how I do this, and let me explain what my policy about test review is and why. I will happily let you review your old exams. You just need to let me know that you want to review it. I'm an adjunct. I don't have an office up there. I don't have storage space, so your, your exams are going to be kept at my house. So, you know, you may come up Tuesday say, can I review my exam this Thursday? Not a problem. I'll bring it. However, you have a limited amount of time in which to review your exam. What I mean by this is you can review exam one between the time we finish exam one and we start exam two. Once we, once we take exam two, the window to review exam one is closed. I do this for a couple of reasons. The first reason is so that you come in and you talk to me. I get to talk to you 
two or three times during the course of the semester, ask how things are doing, how, how, how are they going, how are you doing, one-on-one -on -one time. I get to ask you why you missed this on the test, do you understand why you missed it, do you understand why, and do you understand why this is the correct answer? What has happened in the past is that the day before the final exam, I've had seven students sitting in my hallway outside my office, all wanting to review all three exams. I did not have the space, I did not have the time to give each student individual attention. So by breaking this up, where you have to come review your exams during the course of the semester, I make sure that I have time to spend with you, that I can address your concerns, I can address the shortcomings, what I didn't explain or why the question was bad, I can address what happened to for you not to get the correct answer on this exam. Emails. Emails, this is my pet peeve, and I'll explain why. A number of, their emails are becoming very important, and this is the main way of communicating with others. This means that all of our emails need to be professional. To this end, if you send me an email, there are certain things I expect this email to have. If this email does not have these requirements, I will not respond. First thing should, in your email should be something in the ray or the subject line. Give me a short description of what it's about. The second thing is a greeting. Mr. Smith, Professor Smith, something to this extent, something professional. Howdy is not an appropriate greeting for a professional email. When I'm giving you these rules, these are not only good rules for my class, but for any professor or for any professional environment, for you to follow at work, anything like that. I have approximately 200 students. This means I may or may not know you by name. Help me help you and tell me your name and what class you're in. Mr. Smith, this is John Doe. I am in your, your Sealy class, your, your American government at Sealy that, that meets Tuesday, Thursday, whatever time. What time do we meet? from 725 to 840, okay. In the body of your email, please be succinct, be short. Do not send me four paragraph email stating you're going to miss class tomorrow. If you're going to send me an email, please just say something to the extent of, I'm going to miss class tomorrow, thank you. Sign your email, sincerely thank you or something to this extent, and type your name. These may seem like simple things, but there are many people who do not know to follow these rules. Remember, for some people, the only contact and the, on the only way to make an impression, that you have to make an impression on them, is through emails. Look professional and always give a good impression of yourself. I was teaching an online course this past summer at the end of the semester of the day final grades were due. I get an email that says, grades aren't up, what did I make? Think about that, how does that come across? Wasn't addressed to me, I assume it was to me, which is an assumption, don't make them. I got an email last week to Professor Smith, it was to a different Professor Smith at a different campus. You know, just sign your name. Be thankful. Say, you know, say thank you for helping me, something like this. Like I said, this isn't just for me. This is for everybody. Leave a good impression with the person you're trying to communicate with. Late work. Not accepted. Exams. Expected to be completed on the day they are scheduled. There will be no makeup exams. Leaving class early. Okay. I understand that there may be days when you need to leave early. This is not a problem as long as you tell me beforehand. Letting a professor know you need to leave early beforehand is just common courtesy. Walk into class and say, Mr. Smith, I need to leave early, whatever reason. That's fine. Thank you for letting me know. Come up to me, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to disturb your class, but I have an emergency. I need to leave. I hope everything's okay. I'll see you next class period. Not a problem. You get up and you walk out, we're going to be talking about you. 
once, once the door closes and you're out of the classroom. If you leave early without getting prior permission or without letting me know, you will be counted absent for the day. Schedule. This is based on us starting class on the 29th. I am going to go ahead and do my lecture based on this. We will eventually catch up. Hopefully in the first two weeks, we will catch up. We will be on track. If not, we just move everything back a day. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. We will catch up. August 29th, introduction to course. August 31st and September 5th, begin introduction to government. See, if things go well, September 5th, we're going to, I'm giving you this intro. I'm going to do an intro to government lecture today, and we'll finish it Tuesday. September 7th and the 12th, the U.S. Constitution. September 14th and 19th, the federal system. The 21st and 26th, Congress. September 28th, exam one. We'll cover everything that we've done. Chapters 1, 2, 3, and 12. October 3rd and 5th, the presidency. October 10th and 12th, political parties. 17th and 19th, public opinion. 24th and 26th, interest groups. That should begin interest groups, not continue. October 31st and 2nd, or excuse me, October 31st, exam 2. It will cover everything we've done since exam 1. November 2nd and 7th, bureaucracy and a democracy. November 19th and 14th, the judiciary. November 16th on, it's going to be civil rights, civil liberties. So November 16th, the 21st and the 28th, civil liberties. Please notice November 17th is the Q date. November 23rd is the Thanksgiving holiday. November 30th and December 5th, Civil Rights. December 7th, Exam 3 over Chapters 4, 5, 14, and 15, so everything we've done since Exam 2. Our final exam is on 12-12 from 7.45 to 10 a.m. I hope this helps. I hope this goes over this explains what all we will be doing if you have any questions please feel free to ask me thank you and i look forward to meeting y'all in person have a good weekend